Good morning, you strange and wonderful weirdos. I'm John. I'm Stacy. It's Friday. Thank you, God. <laughs> December the 2nd. And here's why today's strange. All right. We have a bunch of stuff to go over today. Do we? We do. All, All right. right. So let's start with something that astronomers have discovered, a mystery molecule in an exoplanet's atmosphere. Holy cow. Isn't that crazy? It is. So this is due to the James Webb Space Telescope. He's causing all kinds of trouble. He is causing some stuff. Now, he has allowed astronomers to study the atmosphere of a distant gas giant exoplanet with greater precision precision that is than ever before uh leading to some first discoveries right. things that we've never seen before yeah. so we're talking about the exoplanet called wasp 39b well that's got a cool name it does wasp 39b um, they discovered this particular exoplanet in 2011 it's about 700 light years away um and all they really knew about it was that um it about 4.3 million miles away from its star and it it orbits around its star once every four earth days um they did some follow-up observations in 2018 and they noticed some water vapor in its atmosphere yeah well they trained mr james webb space telescope on it because that's what he's up there to do good old jw and (laughs) they recorded four four times it went past the star that's how they know that it's there like it dims the star as it goes around they call it a transit right um and they measured it with several different instruments they've written five papers on this now oh, now this two are still excited. two are still undergoing peer review but the other ones are already up there they're published online and they claim that they see a panoply of atoms and molecules i love that word panoply yeah it's pretty cool but no one ever wins <laughs> uh just for the record a panoply is just a complete or impressive collection I knew that. So it could be used. I never, I did not know that word, and I'm going to use it several times now. Uh, so they see a panoply of atoms and molecules like sodium, potassium, water, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. But there was a mystery molecule. Ah. And they have now figured out that that is sulfur dioxide. Oh. So this is the first time that sulfur dioxide has been detected in the atmosphere of any exoplanet. And it pretty much suggests that the light from the star... Um, is triggering some kind of chemical reaction in its atmosphere, sort of like our ozone layer. Yes, yes. Yes, so it's really exciting discovery, and the first time they've ever seen it. Um, they did claim that they also, the observations that the Webb Telescope made, also suggest that the clouds above the gas giant um, are likely broken up rather than in a uniform blanket, and that's also the first time they've ever seen that with an exoplanet. So lots of crazy new stuff they're seeing. Wow, so they've got, like, puffy clouds and... Weird, uh, like, they, they claim of they're life made, <laughs> creating substances. That's right. They, they claim the clouds are made up of sulfide, silicates, and similar substances, but that they are not just like a full blanket. Can you level. imagine how beautiful it is? Oh, this, I mean, it I mean, some gorgeous. of these worlds that we're discovering, yeah. just when you see like some mm-hmm. of the images of, I don't know, Whistler's nipple, oh, <laughs> all, all, they, they got all these weird names, but right, like right. the birth canal of creation and all that mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's all this unbelievably gorgeous stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the the images that are coming out of the James Webb are just mind blowing. They really are. It's it's. Really are. I want to stare, and I mean, I, don't, I guess you do the same thing when we go through and they release these pictures. It's mm-hmm. hard to not just zoom in and like mm-hmm. look at it and go, "My God, is that really?" out there that's just I so love gorgeous the pillars of creation yes They're that's so what i was joking about gorgeous to me it looks like a big hand which i think is weird but um it does there is say, a big hand of god thing up there too oh well there you go it does say that this is just the first like just one exoplanet that the james webb telescope has done this for and it's expected to image approximately 70 of these so who knows what else we're going to find i wonder if they've thought about looking at the alien megastructure from a few years back remember the one they had Mm -hmm. so much problem identifying Mm -hmm. and they had theories of what it could be right right but they thought it was a dyson sphere Mm -hmm. and that was one of the theories that because that was where some scientists somewhere i don't think it was like uh the drake equation guy but um I, somebody along those lines, probably Dyson. Right, right. <laughs> Could have been. 
<laughs> you know, the vacuum cleaner guy. Right. Came came up with the fact of if we got to that level, right? That level, like your high school has so many levels and you play other people. Mm-hmm. If you get up to that level of humanity or alienity, mm-hmm. um, John Word, <laughs> that you would be able to have like the Dyson sphere mm-hmm. that would harness energy and all this stuff. I just wonder if they decided, you know, hey, let's look at that. Because I did read an article recently that we had focused our attention on the area of space where the wow signal. Yeah, they did some sweeps of that area. I don't think they came up with anything. Yeah, they found nothing. But, I mean, that was in the 70s. Right, right. Whatever was there could have been like, well, we got nothing here. Let's move move on. They move pretty quick, you know. (laughs) It's like, it's just like, I could see it up there. You know, the aliens are like, well... Sorry, Nook Nook, your mom's not here, but we put the signal out. Well, hopefully somebody seen that I was looking for my mom, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, mom. That's okay. It's never going to get old to me. No, it's that's your favorite. Could be the mom signal. <laughs> All right. So while we're speaking of space, um, let's just mention um, this mysterious flash of light that was a thousand trillion suns, brighter than a thousand trillion suns. Think of that. Yes. A thousand trillion Yes. Suns. Now, this was uh, the flash was first spotted at the Palomar Observatory of the California Institute of Technology, and it piqued the interest of a lot of astronomers. Yeah, they had burned no all their eyes out. idea what it was. Um, they could not determine at the time what would release such an immense amount of light all at once. Um, so now there's this new article out saying that the researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, uh, believe they have uncovered its source. And so yeah. they've published a new study uh, claiming that a supermassive black hole had likely expelled a jet of matter as it devoured a nearby star and that it, maybe it was pointing directly at Earth. And that's why it seemed so bright. That's horrifying. Yes. So it devoured the star, and mm-hmm. the star's last little pimple burst. Yeah, it was directly at Earth, and it psh, right at us. And that's why it was so bright. Um, that is terrifying because, I mean, black hole is eating suns, like our sun, like stars as big or bigger than our sun. Yeah, and it's, it's even just scarier like eating when them. you think about the <laughs> fact of all the little black holes that are out there mm-hmm. and how little we know about black holes. Mm-hmm. It's weird, man. It's yeah. space is weird anyway. It is. But there's a lot of weird things about space that they don't even go into that much. Like, mm-hmm. you remember years ago, they came up with the fact that they had found all these little micro wormholes. Right. And right. that one didn't come back around. Right. We haven't heard about that again, have we? No, we haven't. And that was really a release. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's crazy. I mean, that's... It uh, is. It's, it's also anything new. They know what it is. They call it a tidal disruption event so it's something they're aware of it just so happened that this one was facing in a certain way and it was really bright and i mean obviously they're not 100 percent certain that's what it is it's astronomy you know it's a lot of it's just theories and guesses. i think but- we theorized it was a giant mirror yeah out there that they were like Ha-ha. <laughs> they're trying to burn us like ants <laughs> We are ants to them, so. All right, well, let's move on. Let's do an update real quick to a story that we just did back on November 29th, just okay. a few days ago. And remember the story about the San Francisco Police Department wanting to be able to have the robots that were armed and could kill people in extreme measures? Yes. So there is an update now that that rule passed. What? Overwhelmingly, with a vote of eight to three, that... They are now allowed to arm their robots. Was and the robots eight of the people voting robots? And legally kill people. And, you know, it's funny. I don't think I mentioned this when we did the article the first time, but uh, the, the draft that was drawn up at first claimed that the robots were banned from killing people. And the police department struck that out and changed it to they could kill people you know, under extreme circumstances or however they worded it. Um, And that's what passed after they struck it out and changed it. Like at first there was people saying, no, 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 we don't want this to happen. Um, So now the police can use the robots as a deadly force option when risk of loss of life to members of the public or officers is imminent and outweighs. You know what, you know what has driven this? What's that? All of the uh, heat that's been put on our police officers. 
And I'm not saying some of it's not deserved, okay? Right, right. Everything has bad apples. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. But overwhelmingly, the police are trying to do their... I mean, they're putting their life on the line daily for very little pay. Right. And But they're also scared to death, not about criminals or perpetrators. They're scared that they're going to get sued or they're going to have a bad arrest. Or It's mm-hmm. a different world when you're wearing a camera on your chest. And, you know, I, I understand. I really do. Because if I had been wearing cameras back when I was doing a, uh, a job that I did in the past, mm-hmm. you know, that involved throwing people out of buildings or whatever... I probably would have been internet famous. <laughs> Who knows how those videos would have been interpreted early on? Either that, or I've been a star, <laughs> so, or both. Uh, I'm probably just saying, both. there's a lot because it's split. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of split second decisions, and that's mm-hmm. my problem with this robot thing. Mm-hmm. You got split second decision making. Is the right. robot supposed to be making that, or are we remotely oh, no, controlling that? I feel that? like it said that they were remote control, but still, remote control means that whoever's doing it is not in the situation. They're away from the situation. And they're also still kind of... And, you know, like you said, interpretations can be wrong. And, you know, yeah. the feelings of the... Like, I think it takes the human aspect out of it too much. And it makes it more like, like we said, more like a video game, more like less accountable or See, something. I don't the, really there know. There has to be a fine line, such as like RoboCop. Right. You know, I mean, RoboCop, except for that cool, like, RoboCop fan video where he shoots all the wieners off. I love that. <laughs> but... You know, you could have like a man in a robotic suit, which we're very close to that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even do the Elon thing that they've been working on, like the Neuralink stuff. We could right. we could put a robotic suit on that and, you know, just something would be safer for the police officer. And You know, they're moving that Neuralink into human testing now. Oh. I believe it's been tested through the monkeys. Elon. And it's moving on into the human testing phase. Listen, Elon Musk. All right, Elon Musk. I know I can at you, and you're more than likely going to notice now with Twitter because it seems like you notice everything. I'm going to do it this time. Listen, I want to be a human test subject for Neuralink. I will do it. I will sign the papers. It can't be any worse than it is. <laughs> uh, did you see the news article where the guy wants Elon to send him to Mars? So he got Elon Musk tattooed on his forehead with a rocket. He's like a bald guy. And he has a lot of tattoos anyway. Doesn't look like the smartest guy in the room, if you know what I mean. So but I'm not doing that. He got the word, he got Elon Musk's name tattooed on his forehead and a big, like, not very well drawn rocket. And he wants Elon to send him to Mars. Yeah, that's the guy we're going to send on the long trip to Mars. <laughs> like, I got this Tesla for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely okay. I I will. Oh, I'm going with that girl. What's up? <laughs> anyway. All right. Shall we move on? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about a really cool discovery uh, from Tel Aviv. Wait a second. The monkeys... They tried it on monkeys? I believe so, yes, that they did a test with monkeys and it went well. And so now they're going to so try and move that into the human. Going well with the monkeys. Mm-hmm. Are we talking like you damn dirty ape kind of went well? Are they like, oh my God. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. So You know Elon has a couple of monkeys living at the house now like... Hello, sir. <laughs> it's all Umbrella Academy in there now with oh their my God. <laughs> monkey butler. Well, I mean, the whole thing is to... Oh, I got to find out about the monkeys. Okay. All right. Let's move on uh, to a cool discovery from Tel Aviv. Uh, this is about a tour guide who was taking a school field trip around a ancient ar- archaeological site. Basically, the kids were learning how to do the tour guide themselves. They were learning to be tour guides for other people. Uh, they were walking around this site, and the tour guide found a 3,000-year-old scarab seal, oh. Egyptian scarab seal. Now, his name is uh, Galad Stern. He's of the Israeli Antiquity Authorities Educational Center, and he was leading the tour. And he saw this little thing on the ground. He said it looked like a small toy maybe on the ground. And something inside him, he said an inner voice, just told him, you know, pick that up. Turn it over. The scarab told him And he picked it up, and on the back is a little carving on the back of this little scarab. And it shows two figures. 
One of them is seated, and the other, with an elongated head, which they say likely represents the crown of an Egyptian pharaoh, mm -hmm, uh, raising its hand above the first figure, above the one that's seated. Um, it says it's possibly an ancient pharaoh bestowing authority on a local Canaanite ruler. That's how they interpret that it's a little carving. E.T. getting ready to bitch slap that son of a bitch. <laughs> it's really small. I mean, it's just a little scarab seal. We have um, to remember that. <laughs> yeah, no, gonna do. but it's actually very cool that's crazy um so it, and it's right in the center it's right in tel aviv it didn't give me the name of the actual archaeological site but um it's really cool that these kids were there learning about the site so that they could teach other people and then they happened to find yeah an archaeological thing they keep it fueled really up for cool. years that's amazing. That's really yeah. cool. Also, Tel Aviv mm -hmm. is my favorite Duran Duran song, but you'll never find it on a normal album because there's a there's like an instrumental edition on the first album mm -hmm. from 1981. Since they just went into the Hall of Fame, this is topical, and I can talk about this. <laughs> they went into the Hall of Fame a week ago. I think of, you have a whole year to talk about Duran Duran now. One of my favorite bands, but you can find it on the extended edition of the first album, and right. it's the Tel Aviv AIR Studio Edition. It's about eight minutes long, and it's heavy on the guitar, which you won't find on many other stuff, but mm -hmm. it's also got the lyrics anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so really cool story. They said that hundreds of scarabs have been discovered in modern Israel, uh, mostly in graves, but sometimes they just find them around that uh, some of them were imported, but a lot of them were copies that local So classes. they had never seen this artwork before, obviously. Um, not this particular carving, I guess. It didn't say that it was anything they'd ever seen before because they were just trying to interpret what it would mean right. from this seal. So I don't know. It's really unusual. I mean, it's very small, so it's not super detailed, but you can tell what the figures are doing. And the one standing up does have a, a bigger head. Yeah. So either it's an ET or somebody slipped when they were carving or I don't know. Something yeah, happened. I mean, that's really interesting. <laughs> All right. So let's move on and let's talk about a creepy find. Uh, this is from Brazil. Oh, uh, so Leticia Gomes Santiago and her boyfriend Devanir Souza were strolling along the shoreline in Comprida, Sao Paulo State, Brazil, and they stumbled upon a very strange and creepy skeletal hand. They called it an alien hand. They didn't know what it was. It looked just like a hand, but it was too big to be a human hand. Very strange. And so they filmed it. They even put it up beside like her flip flop to show how large it was. It had like the weird bones in it and it had like fingers. And they shared some pictures and a marine biologist named Eric Komen stated that the unusual hand actually belonged to a cetacean, cetacean, I think that's how you say it, which is basically just either a dolphin, a whale or a porpoise. So I did not know this, but a dolphin's fin the bones in a dolphin's fin are almost exactly like human arm. They have the same bones. They're shaped a little differently, but they have the fingers like in the, in the fin is the finger bones. And then there's a couple of, there's two other bones like would be in our forearm. And then another bone like would be in the top of our arm. It's just squished down a little differently, but I that's, did not know that, and it's very creepy. That explains why when that time we saw the dolphins, and one was trying to get the other one to smell a spin. <laughs> the, um, well, I mean, they're just like humans. They are. And they're mammals. Mm -hmm. And they breathe, and they get weird and emotional and um, pull dead chicks back in the... Right, in the water. Yeah. Uh, he does claim that due to the size of this particular hand, it probably belongs to a dolphin, which are commonly found in the region. And based on the images of the decomposition, it said it's probably been dead around 18 months, probably died at sea, and this part just washed up. Must have been a thief But dolphin. for people that don't understand or don't know that that skeleton belongs to a dolphin, that is a very creepy thing to find. It did look just like a skeleton hand. Did it? Yeah, like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's, that's interesting, though. I think it's more interesting mm -hmm. about the lesson we learned. Yes, there you go. So while we're talking about animals, let's talk about these psychic animals that have posted their picks for the FIFA World Cup. Oh, Here you go. You yeah. can bet on the FIFA World All Cup based you, on the animals. Jeju of football people out there. <laughs> um, you know, it's a big, big time mm -hmm. for the World Cup. And, oh, and Of course, if you are in the sad <laughs> state of the country, they're holding it in. They're not having that fun, but... Still yet, it's the World Cup, so... Well, this particular article is pretty cool because it goes back and starts talking about Paul the Psychic Octopus. Oh, you would love him. Yes, yeah. so Paul had an incredible run of eight 
correct World Cup winner predictions Jeez. in the South Africa tournament in 2010 from his tank at the Aquarium Sea Life Center in Oberhausen, Germany. Sweet. Yes. So, uh, so Paul's like living a big life now. Uh, no, no. Well, maybe it says Paul's competition came from his successor. So I guess he's passed on now. His successor is Rubio the octopus, who was an icon in Japan for his 100% success rate in predicting the matches in 2018. Teen. Wow. However, his clairvoyant life was cut short after he was eventually chopped up and made into seafood. Yes, they took the psychic octopus and they chopped him up. And it doesn't say they did that to Paul. I don't know what happened to Paul because he was in Germany and not Japan. But in Japan, you make a few predictions, then they have you for lunch. So uh, <laughs> the next predictor was Tayo the Otter, who predicted Japan's win this week at the 2022 World Cup. In Qatar. That wasn't supposed to happen. And Tayo lives at the Maxell Aqua Park in Shinagawa in Japan. I wonder if anybody told Tayo what happened to Rubio. And this was an otter? This is an otter. Thank yeah. goodness you can't like just chop up otters and eat them. I don't they, think they uh, eat otters. He otter no better. Uh, so basically, he was given three labeled buckets to choose from. Japan, uh, a draw, or Germany. And the otter didn't hesitate. He picked Japan right off the bat. Um, it does say in here that there was, in the 2018 World Cup, there was Mar Marcus the Mystic Pig, and he predicted a World Cup victory for England by choosing an apple with the English flag on it. However, the prediction flopped, and England was terminated in the semifinals, semifinals and I don't think Marcus the Pig made it very long after that. You can't trust the pig. <laughs> We've established that on the show. Um, an especially talented predictor is Nelly the Elephant. You from the Serengeti elephants. Park in Hodengagen, Germany. Hodengagen. 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 I think that's what that is. Uh, she had a streak of 30, <laughs> 30 out of 33 matches, correct. Oh, God. Between the 2006 World Cup, the 2010 World Cup, and the 2012 Euros. So she was very good. Uh, the only other one they mention is Camilla the Mystic Camel from Melton Mowbray in England. Camilla and, the Mystic Campbell. Yes, Camilla. I, think I the saw Mystic her dance Campbell. once. She. They say she is never wrong and had good news for England. She predicted the Three Lions group stage win over Iran, Iran at the Qatar World Cup, and they did win. So I don't know what she's predicting next. It they should say, have asked a flock of seagulls about the one with Iran. There is a. <laughs> um, there is an article out there about. Um, someone on TikTok that claims they're a time traveler and that they know who's going to win and that in the finals it's going to that Brazil's going to beat France in the finals two to one is it the cool but, one where the guys like in the empty malls and stuff and I, I don't know there's so many now on yeah. TikTok you can't keep them time travelers straight it's like everybody decided to travel back to 2022 I don't yeah, why? I don't why would know. you do that? I have no idea. I mean, the future must be pretty bleak if you're coming yeah, if you're back in, here. If you're in 2022, it's there's something. If you can time travel and you're in 2022, yeah, okay. All right, so let's move on and let's talk about a, a problem with some chickens. Oh God! So I hope they're not doing cocaine. They are not, <laughs> but they are having a real trouble with some avian flu. Oh no! And they're having to like put all the chickens together in like in quarantine them together in like the like have a chicken pox party sort of with actual chickens sort of they're putting in confined spaces and they do like a protection zone around it like i think in this particular one there's a farm near norfolk in england and they're doing a three kilometer protection zone and a 10 kilometer surveillance zone around the place where the chickens are uh, but the problem they're having is that they're turning into cannibal chickens because you cannot take chickens that are potentially ill and cram them all in a little tiny space. Do you know what they're going to do? They turn into cannibals. Why do they do that? I don't know. It's just a thing. It's an issue that the farmer's even worried about because some side effects of the virus, um, which is cannibalism in confined spaces. So they're having... Dude. And they're going to have to cull them. Now, this is the second, second batch of cannibal chickens to be culled now. That's the article. They have to cull them, which they say they do humanely. So the virus turns them to flesh-eating zombies. Well, I mean, it wouldn't, except that they have to cram them all together to quarantine them. So the virus combined with the closed quarters means they peck each other. Death, uh, Anthony Allen of Cotswold's Chickens, he is a chicken expert, he says. Uh, he said that the virus and the implications of the disease is the biggest issue it presents to chicken keepers. And he claims that keeping chickens in confined spaces can bring all sorts of issues which can end in cannibalism. 
did not know chickens were capable of such a thing. Well, you know, in their defense, mm-hmm. it tastes like chicken. Chicken's delicious. <laughs> wow. All right, let's just do this last story. Are you ready for this last one? I don't know. If I can top cannibal chickens. All right, this is a story from Mississippi, Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. There was you, you've topped it already. Argument between two men over a golf game that led one golfer to bite the nose off of the other in the parking lot of a casino. Bit his nose right off. So Mark Wells, uh, who's 51, initially fled the scene in his Tesla before he turned himself in to the police. Now, they didn't find the nose. No idea where the nose They went. looked, but no one knows. Don't know if Mr. Wells ate it or chewed it up or spit it out or, you know, maybe driving down the road and phew, kind of thing. I don't know. They didn't find it. Uh, but they the took nose the, is on the run. They took the victim to the hospital where he has a disfiguring facial injury. I'd say. I believe that he's probably going to be okay. It doesn't specify exactly. Um, and later on, Mr. Wells turned himself in and was charged with a felony mayhem. Um, it's a cool so name. Felony mayhem, uh, state law, defines that as premeditated crime committed with the intent to kill, in which the suspect mutilates, disfigures, disables, or destroys someone's tongue, eye, lip, nose, limb, or another body parts. So I don't know if he... That was a pretty bad argument if he was trying to kill him by biting off his nose. Well, I mean... Kind of gross. Yeah. Um, I mean, Hole in the face. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty nasty. Bacteria from the teeth. I don't know. Um, Depends on the did, size of the nose. I suppose. I suppose. Or, you know, how easy it was. Yeah, one of those old English, like, with the warts and the damn... I mean, is that really your first, like, if you're arguing with somebody and you get, I'm so mad at you, and then you lean in and bite their nose? My like, first, how does that work? <laughs> my first un- unintentional anger is headbutt. <laughs> I've done it several times. A headbutt, I would understand. It's very reactionary. You know, hey, Brandon. Like, <laughs> you know, Brandon it's sort will of show a, you a scar. That's <laughs> a quick. It thing. always embarrasses me from my younger days. You never days. thought to bite something off somebody? Hey, man, <laughs> it's right here. Um, th- no, no, mm. I never. I had somebody bite me though. Oh. Yeah, right on the right on the bicep. Ooh, ow! Yeah, they, they were they were stiff like a dog. I picked them up, and you know, like when a dog's biting your, and right? It's like and they won't let go, and, it, and it's or all snake stiff or body. Yeah, yeah, like. I had to pick him up like that over and over. That's and awful. Um, it does say that... I've lived a charmed life. ...booked into the Hancock County Jail. He paid his 10% of his $50,000 bond himself and walked out within the hour. He does have to go back to court, and he faces up to seven years in prison if convicted of the felony. Although I dare say Mr. Wells has money for a pretty good lawyer. He has a Tesla. He has a Tesla. He's, He's in a- Mississippi. He's at a off. golf he'll resort, get, casino, he'll get golf off course. Of it. <laughs> I mean, you'll the other guy will wear like the. You remember Happy Gilmore and the wooden hand, right? It, right. He does have a big wooden, wooden nose. <laughs> I want to know what happened to the nose. No, I would like to know. Everybody wants to know that, and you know, wow. I guess a very nosy person will be able to sleuth that one wow i'm gonna stop lots there. of nose humor Listen, there you guys have a wonderful wonderful december weekend i hope that the weather is perfect where you're at and you're enjoying yourself enjoying the others enjoying some football and enjoying waiting for us until monday morning that's why today is strange 